here the question is a cone diameter of base 60 millimeter and height 70 millimeter is resting on HP on the point of periphery of the base so axis of the cone may 60 degree with HP and 30 degree with the VP draw the projections of the cone when the apex is nearer to the VP so in this case again it is a cone but the condition is that uh, the, the dimensions of the cone is also given and the condition is that it is resting on a point of periphery of the base that is uh, it is not lying on one of its generators instead it is resting on one of the periphery of the base one of the point of the periphery of the uh, periphery of the base on hp and uh, the second conditions the other conditions that are given is the axis of the cone makes 60 degree with hp and 30 degree with the vp so these two angles are the actual angles the true angles so 60 degree with hp and 30 degree with the vp so we know that when that uh, when um, when the axis is parallel to hp or parallel to vp then only we can draw uh, the true inclinations in the front view as well as uh, uh, in the top view that is when it is the axis is parallel to vp you can draw the true inclination in hp i mean sorry in the front view true inclination in the front view when the axis is parallel to vp you can draw the true inclination in the front view and the axis is parallel to HP, then only you can draw the true inclination with the VP. Sorry, true inclination in the top view. So when the axis is parallel to HP, you can draw the true inclination in the top view. When the axis is parallel to VP, you can draw the true inclination in the front view. That is the condition. But in this case, the true inclination of both the conditions are given. So in the initial condition anyway you are drawing the axis as perpendicular to the hp so perpendicular to the hp means it is parallel to vp so in this case the axis of the cone is making an angle of 60 degree with hp and 30 degree with the vp so in the initial position the axis is anyway perpendicular to the hp so uh, in the top view it will be a circle and in the front view it will be a triangle no no changes but in the second case what we do is we initially give the axis the inclination with HP. So the inclination is 60 degree. Since the axis is parallel to VP, we assume that the axis is parallel to VP and uh, it is inclined at a 60 degree with HP. So in that case, in the front view, you can give the actual 60 degree, 60 degree with the VP. Sorry, 60 degree with HP. That you can give in the front view, no problem. But in the next condition, in the third condition, that is when it is 30 degree inclined to the VP, we cannot directly give the 30 degree since it is not uh, parallel to HP. See, it is already inclined at an angle 60 degree with the HP. So what we have to do is we have to find out the apparent inclination using the actual inclination and a true length. You, we have to find out the apparent inclination and then based on the apparent inclination, you have to draw the third top view how it is done uh, let me explain it so first we draw the xy line then the top view in the previous case the diameter is 60 millimeter then all the eight points are marked uh, in only two di diameters are drawn the vertical as well as the horizontal diameters are not displayed here actually there will be all the eight all the four diameters will be there so then the axis the height is 70 millimeter four dashes marked all those points are marked then front view is completed this is same as the previous condition the only thing is the dimension is different this is same as in the previous condition. No explanation is required. Now the next condition is the axis is making an angle of 60 degree with the XY line. So that way you have to draw it. The axis is making an angle of 60 degree with the XY line. That you have to be very careful while drawing this axis 60 degree with the, this line. 
first you have to draw this 60 degree inclination line then what you have to do is you have to find out this distance distance from c dash g dash to e dash this distance uh, that you have to find out then taking okay uh, th that that distance you have to find out and uh, using your set square and uh, pen, uh, scale using your set square and scale you have to adjust you have to adjust this line it should be perpendicular to this line and it should be perpendicular to this line that is you can put your set square uh, scale actually initially you have to uh, put your scale along this line scale along this line and you have to slide your set square along the scale you have to slide the set square along the scale so that this distance this distance equal to this distance so these two distances, this distance the C, from the C dash, G dash to E dash, distance is equal to this one. You have to find out the initial point E1. Once the point E1 is obtained, then you can complete uh, this distance. This E dash, O dash distance is already there. You have you take your compass and measure this distance, E dash, O dash distance. Then from e, E1 dash, from E1 dash, draw an arc on the axial, axial line on the axis line and uh, then mark the o1 dash point so likewise you can find out this a1 dash also using the triangular property property of the triangle you can find out a1 dash also so th that is the way how you will draw this one otherwise uh, it will be something like uh, the shape won't be like this because e1 has to be on the xy line and this has to be 60 degree inclined, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that will make it difficult uh, for you to draw a cone, or a, actually, it is a triangle, a triangle uh, with one of its vertices on the x y line, and uh, the axis is making an angle of 60 degree with the x y line. So uh, for that one, you have to use your set square and scale also. So then uh, this is the front view that is drawn and remark all the points. Now, the second top view, in order to get the second top view, you have to, you are looking from here. So that way, all the points are marked. This this is again in the, as in the previous case. The only thing is in the previous case, it was resting on one of its generators. In this case, it is resting on one of its base uh, points or one of the points on the base like this is drawn while this one is drawn see this part of this ellipse is invisible why it is invisible because it is uh, lying behind or lying below this points below these points it is it will be invisible actually not the full length the only part that is within this particular two lines that is within these two lines will be invisible the others will be visible the other part will be visible the only part that is within these two straight lines as in the previous case those within the within the those two uh, straight lines will be invisible i said in the previous case if we rotate it in such a way that the apex is away from the xy line the condition so in that case uh, some part of the base circle is invisible in the front view so that case is here also here uh, the apex is nearer to the observer so some part of the base circle will be invisible and that part is the part that is within these two straight lines so that part is invisible and the rest is visible so that's it now the shape is slightly different as in the previous case now what we have to do is since now the angle is all sorry the axis is already inclined at a 60 degree to the hp so if the axis was parallel to hp then you should have given the in the top view the axis as 30 degree but in this case the axis is not uh, parallel to hp so for that one you have to find out the apparent inclination the apparent inclination as we does in our projection of lines that you have to find out. So how to find out the apparent inclination or the uh, top view of the axis 
top view of the axis when the axis is inclined at a 60 degree to the HP and for uh, 30 degree to the VP. So that condition, 60 degree to the HP and 30 degree to the VP. That condition you have to give. So for that one, what you have to do is first you draw a line which is of length, sorry, which is of um, inclination 30 degree. A 30 degree inclined line is first drawn. Then any point O is marked. So in this case, the the top view of the axis is O O1. Top view of the axis is O O1. So what we first do is we first mark a point O on this 30 degree inclined line. This you have to be very careful. You have to understand it carefully. So the point O is drawn here. Any any point, any point, any sufficiently distant point, then the true length of the axis is taken. The true length of the axis is marked on this 30 degree inclined line. True length of the axis is marked on the true the uh, inclined on the 30 degree inclined line. Then from this point, from the true length line, the sec from the second end point, you draw a locus, a horizontal line. It should not be a chain line. It has to be the actual. Uh, it it can be any type of line. Uh, it is a continuous line. It is. I prefer it to be a continuous line. But somehow, in the drawing, it became a chain line. So, uh, the, the, this is the locus of our uh, axis, second endpoint of the axis. Actually, the apex of the axis or the uh, O1. The locus of the O1 will be this this particular line and in that line with the from O mark a distance O O1 mark a distance O O1 and from O you draw a an arc you draw an arc this is the locus of O2 so when you draw it it will be perfectly vertical when you get it it will be perfectly vertical why it is perfectly vertical See the sum of the inclinations of the uh, axis. It is 60 degree and 30 degree. The sum is 90 degree. Uh, in the projection of lines, in one of the problems, I said that when the projections are, uh, when the inclinations are, when the true inclinations are, uh, the sum of the true inclinations, the sum of the true inclinations are 90 degree. In that case, the projections will be perpendicular to the XY line. When the sum of the inclinations is 90 degree that is all theta plus phi is 90 degree in that case the projections will be perpendicular to the xy line that we have already set in the projection of lines so the same case here also so when you are drawing if there is a slight variation in dimensions very slight variation in dimensions this won't intersect here so what you have to do is you can directly take a perpendicular line a perpendicular line from O to this line, this horizontal line. So that will be this point will be O1. So this is the point O1 or in this case it is O2 because the second drawing the point will be O2. So O2. So now you can draw O O1. This distance here, this O O2 is there with the O O2 as the base. With the OO2 as base, you have to reconstruct this ellipse. With the OO2 as a base, as, a, as the base line, as the base line, you have to reconstruct this entire figure. Then, the, the final front view also. So, in the final front view, it will be this. Here also, the axis will be perpendicular to the xy line. So this axis is perpendicular to the front view of the axis is perpendicular to the xy line since the in, in sum of the inclinations is 90 degree. It is 60 plus 30 degree, so it is 90 degree. That is why it is the uh, projection, sorry, the projections of the front uh, axis in the front view and in the top view are perpendicular to the xy line. Okay, so once again, I... Uh,
show you how to draw the final drawing first you mark a 30 degree inclined line then anywhere on the line mark a point o and mark the true length and from the true length the second end point of the true length you draw a horizontal line that is the locus and uh, from o draw a perpendicular line that is the best way draw a perpendicular line which is equal to which is the length of which is equal to o o1 in the previous top view or take the radius and then cut it uh, but in most of the cases when you cut it it will be slightly inclined or it may not uh, touch this particular horizontal line so it is always better you use your common sense common sense and uh, use uh, o o1 as the distance and uh, draw a vertical line here or a perpendicular line here so then o2 is obtained then keeping o o2 as the base line you complete the top view then from the top view you go for the front view in the front view also the axis the front view of the axis will be perpendicular to the xy line and uh, that's it any doubts sir locus of o2 distance etra irun and the true length axis in the true length uh, 70 mm 70 mm okay sir 